We previously saw some ways to display data for two categorical variables at once. We saw that to answer questions concerning how two categorical variables relate, it's more useful to look at percentages than it is to look at raw numbers. But exactly which percentages we calculate will determine on which question we're trying to answer. And this gets us into talking about what are called conditional distributions. Today, we'll go over what conditional distributions are, go over some examples, how to display a conditional distribution, and how to use a conditional distribution to determine if there is an association between two categorical variables. A conditional distribution of a variable describes the values of that variable among individuals who have a specific value of another variable, so it shows only the individuals who satisfy a particular condition. Condition. There's a separate conditional distribution for each value of this other variable. If the other variable has three possible values, then there are three different conditions that we could consider. For example, you could look at the preferred subject among all students in a high school, or you could look at the preferred subject given that the person is a freshman, in which case you're only looking at ninth graders, or given that they're a senior, in which case you're only looking at twelfth graders, and so on. The example we've been going back to is those aboard the Titanic, whether or not they survived, and their ticket class. For first, second, third, or if they were a crew member. And a question we might ask is, did someone's chance of surviving the Titanic depend on their ticket class? So one thing we could do is to look at how the distribution of ticket class changes between survivors and non-survivors. In this table, we're really looking at two conditional distributions at once. In the first row, we're looking at the conditional distribution of ticket class given that the person survived. And in the second row, we're looking at the conditional distribution of ticket class, given that the person did not survive. Thus, in the first row, we're only considering those who survived, and so everything adds up to 100%, all of the people who survived. Just like in the second row, we're only considering those who died, and so the percentages again add up to 100%, because that's all of the people who died. So this percentage, 28.6, is not 203 divided by all people aboard the Titanic. It's just 203 divided by 711. It's the percent of people who survived that were in the first class. Just like this percentage down here, 11.2%. This is 167 divided by 1,490. It's not the percent of people aboard the Titanic who died and were in second class. It's the percent of people who died that were in the second class. From these conditional distributions, for example, we can see that if you died, it's more likely that you were in the crew than it is that you were in the second class. But this doesn't necessarily answer our question about whether or not ticket class and survival status are related. Because, for example, even if you survived, you're still more likely to be in the crew than you are to be in second class. It could be that ticket class and survival status are related, or this could just be an effect of the fact that the crew is bigger than the second class. Really, we don't want to be looking at the ticket class based on the condition of survival status, which is what this table is giving us. Rather, we want to be looking at survival status based on the conditions of the ticket class. Before we do that, one more thing with these conditional distributions, we can actually make a pie chart for each conditional distribution, because given the condition that someone survived, that only consists of the alive people. So we can make one whole pie chart for 100% of the alive people, and this is separated into the ticket classes and the portions of the survivors that those ticket classes made up. Similarly, if it's given that someone did not survive, well, that only applies to people who did not survive. So they make up 100% of this pie, which again is split 
proportionally into the ticket classes among those who did not survive. It will be much easier to answer a question about whether ticket class and survival were related by seeing how the distribution of survival changes between the ticket classes, and that is given in this table. So this table contains four conditional distributions because we are conditioning on ticket class, which has four values. Given the condition that someone was on the crew, there's a 24% chance they survived and a 76% chance they died. On the other hand, given that someone was in the first class, there's a 62.5% chance they survived, more likely than not, and only a 37.5% chance they did not survive. And remember how these percents are calculated. For example, since this is the conditional distribution of survival status, given that somebody is in the first class, we would do 203 divided by the total number of people who satisfy the condition of being in first class, 325. That's how we get 62.5%. Just like over here, we're looking at the conditional distribution of survival status among people who satisfy the condition of being in the third class. In this case, the total is 706. So for example, 528 divided by 706, that's how we get 74.8%. This makes it pretty clear that indeed, ticket class and survival status are related. You can see as we go down from first, second, third, and crew, the likelihood of survival decreases. We can drive this point home further with what's called a side-by-side -side bar chart. We have four pairs of bars for the four conditions, the condition of being in first, second, third, or the crew. And each of these conditions has two bars, one representing the percent of people in that category who survived, and one representing the percent of people in that category who did not survive. For example, we see over 60% of the first class survived, and less than 40% of them died, whereas well over 60% of the crew died, and only a little over 20% of them survived. We can actually make this side-by-side -side bar chart even more simple, because the survival status variable only has two values, so there's only two bars in each of these conditions. So knowing the height of one bar tells us the height of the other, since they have to add to 100%. These two bars together make up all of the first class passengers. So if I know that, let's say, 39% of them died, well, I know that also 61% of them must not have died. So we really only need one bar per category in this situation. With that in mind, we can get this very simple bar chart display showing us the percent of each ticket class who died. And again, this makes the association between ticket class and survival status very clear. We see that the death rate goes up up and up as we proceed through these ticket classes. So yes, we can see from the conditional distributions and certainly in these bar charts that ticket class and survival status do have an association between them. The variables are not what we would call independent. If they were independent, knowing somebody's ticket class would not tell us anything about whether or not they survived. That's clearly not the case here. If we know somebody was in the first class, they're much more likely to have survived than somebody in the crew, who's much more likely to have died. So the variables ticket class and survival status are not independent. If they were independent, we would expect all of these bars to have roughly the same height, because in that case, knowing somebody's ticket class would not tell you anything about whether they were more or less likely to have survived. Let's revisit a previous situation for some more practice. A random sample of 790 college students from various universities in Canada and the United States was collected. Each participant completed a campus life survey that recorded the student's country of origin and their preferred extracurricular activity from the following options, sports, debate, community service, band, or a creative writing group. And the data are summarized here. First, we're asked to find the conditional distribution of extracurricular preference among students from the United States and Canada. So the conditional variable is the country. We're going to look at the number of people who preferred each extracurricular activity, given that they're from the United States, 
And then separately, we can look at the conditional distribution, given that they are from Canada. In each case, the raw counts are what they are. We see them right here in the table. But again, percentages are more useful when we're trying to compare categorical variables, since the number of people in each category could be different. So here are those conditional distributions. Again, we see just the raw counts are in each table. So this is the United States table. This is the Canada table. And then more useful are the percentages. So given that someone is from the United States, there's a 28.6% chance that they prefer to join a sports team. On the other hand, given the condition that someone is from Canada, there's a 24.3% chance that they prefer to join band, just as an example. And remember, to calculate these percentages for the conditional distribution, we have to divide these counts specifically by the total number of people in the United States, since we're looking at the distribution of extracurricular preferences among those who satisfy the condition of being United States students. The total number of United States students, if you add those up, is 420. So 95 divided by 420, for example, gives us that 22.6%. On the other hand, there are 370 Canadian students, so to find these percents, we have to divide these counts by 370, the total number of students satisfying the condition of being from Canada. Again, since country of origin had two values, United States or Canada, there are two conditional distributions we could consider. Second, we are asked to make an appropriate graph to compare the conditional distributions. Just as with the Titanic example, an appropriate graph here would be a side-by-side -side bar chart, where we can have a pair of bars for each of these preferred extracurriculars. For each of the preferred extracurriculars, one bar will show the percentage of United States students that preferred it, and the other bar will show the percentage of Canadian students who preferred it. Such a side-by-side -side bar chart would look like this. So again, you see we have a pair of bars for each of the possible extracurriculars, and each one has a pair of bars, one corresponding to the percentage of U.S. students that preferred it, and one corresponding to the percentage of Canadian students that preferred it. So at a glance, we can start to see how these preferences compare across the conditional variable of country. United States students were more likely to prefer joining a sports team than Canadian students, whereas Canadian students were more likely to prefer joining a band, and the preference for community service was about the same between the two countries. So finally, number three, is there an association between country of origin and preferred extracurricular? Take another look at that side-by-side -side bar chart and give evidence to support your answer. I'll put a solution on screen now. There is certainly an association between country of origin and preferred extracurricular. There is various pieces of evidence that you could supply to justify that conclusion, but as an example, someone from the United States is more likely to prefer joining a sports team than someone from Canada. It's 28.6% to 23%. But someone from Canada is more likely to prefer joining a band. It's 24.3% for Canada to 16.3%. 7% for the United States. So that's a look at conditional distributions, how to display them, and how to use them to determine whether or not there's an association between a pair of categorical variables. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my statistics course and statistics exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching.